Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is a custom video, the first of a couple for Robin. All right, Robin writes, Hi, Austin. I enjoy your channel, and your content always provides new insights. Congratulations on the new live stream channel. Thank you, Robin. And guys, link in the description. We do shows daily. Be sure to check that out. Be sure to subscribe to that channel, and you can even jump on and talk to me live. All right, he says, I have wired you $100 for two reviews. The first review is for my watches. The second is for advice on servicing watches. First, the watch review. All the watches were purchased with box and papers and less noted. None were purchased from an authorized dealer. Note to Austin, I'm Irish, yes, from Ireland, so I talk a lot, feel free to edit. He does, we've got pages and pages of words here, but what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll go through and when I get to a good stopping place, we'll end part one and then we'll continue this in part two. He says, I will start with the two outliers and they're outliers because they're non-Rolex pieces, kind of. One of them's a Rolex, but the other one's not. All right, we'll start with the non-Rolex. Brigade Type 20, reference 3800 Aaronville, year of production 1997. This was the second watch I purchased. Up to that point, I had one watch, a bluesy, bought in 2015 from an authorized dealer with a discount off retail price. Wow, so that would be a ceramic? Was it? Yeah, I guess it would be like a ceramic bluesy. Everything was in stock at the AD in 2015. That's interesting. So he had a ceramic bluesy. It's gone now. He bought that in, at an authorized dealer. Um, he probably regrets selling it, but again, like he points out, you could get everything in 2015 from an authorized dealer. I mean, we all wish we could go back to the past and buy all those lemons, i.e. Kermits and, and all those uh, watches that weren't selling. And, and look, I mean, I was I was getting into watches about that same time, 2014, and I remember passing up uh, the idea of getting a Sea Dweller 4000, right? That would have been an awesome watch to pick up, but at the time, I wasn't interested. I wanted a pre-ceramic watch. I liked that aesthetic more. Again, it was a different time and uh, 2020 hindsight, so the bluesy may be gone, but that's fine. All right, he says, and we're talking about the Breguet now, I bought it on Chrono24, private seller. It was originally sold in Japan. All right. A lot of pre-owned models for sale here. It's a great place to buy a pre-owned watch. People here take care of their watches, so it's a great place to buy a watch. Came with a tritium dial, which is starting to patina. It's got the T-Swiss T uh, indication on the dial. This watch has great appeal. It's close to vintage, has a great history, and doesn't get unwanted attention. The curved crystal is a winner and it put me on the path of adding watches no longer in production. I prefer it to the Omega. And he's talking about the Omega Moon Watch. And it is more interesting than the Moon Watch for sure. I mean, you see a lot of Moon Watches here in Japan and uh, they're beautiful watches, cool watches, but this is a, a lot more interesting and more unique and they've got the transatlantic with the date that's one watch i looked at on the live show the other day nice date placement at the six this is without a date and i think this has a cleaner look it makes that subdial at the six more usable it's more of a i guess a purist chronograph i like functions so i like dates but this is a beautiful watch and it's got a rotating bezel and that's really, really useful. And uh, and it's a non-Rolex piece. Like he says, it, it is not as overt as many Rolex pieces. So this is a great watch. It could be a daily wear. I think for me, it would be more of a daily wear if it had the date. Would I go transatlantic because of the date at the six? It, it's really a question of aesthetics. If, if you're willing to sacrifice aesthetics because you need that date hmm. but I think this is the better looking of the two so beautiful non Rolex piece and much more interesting in my opinion than the moon watch it's a fancier watch and if you're kind of a sporty person I think the Omega 
moulage might be the way to go. I'm more of a sporty person, so that's maybe the way I would go. And of course, that uh, comes on bracelets. This has, uh, it looks to have a, a leather band, so you'd have to watch your yourself when, when you're walking around out in the rain. You don't want to ruin your band. And so, yeah, great watch. All right, look at the next piece. Uh, this is number two, OP39. Grape reference 114300. This is the first of my two contemporary watches bought unworn from Chrono24. This is my main daily wear. Sorry, but our tastes diverge. I like sunray dials, and for me, Rolex sunray is right at the top. Hey, um, I agree. I, I think the sunburst, as I call it, uh, sunray as you call it, dials are absolutely beautiful. So, yeah. Um, I'm on board with that. Generally, it looks like the watch has a dark dial and the light hits it, boom, and you've got that beautiful you know, sunburst color. And they look great in the sunlight, for sure. It is just as tool, tool watch, as the Air King or Explorer in terms of toughness and specs. Its DNA is impeccable, and it has the classic case, which has a more sensuous curve than the professional models. It easily works as a dress watch, absolutely. It's the purest oyster for sure. I mean, nothing but just the time, and it's a it's a do-everything watch. Works great as a dress watch. Doesn't have the Mercedes hand like the Explorer, and the dial is cleaner. I mean, there is a cleaner dial. That's the white dial. That's got the cleanest of them all uh, because of, as far as this goes, the... The different colored indices, uh, you know, some people might not like that, and the red accents, personal preference we're talking, okay? Uh, but yes, it is a purest oyster, and every bit as capable as their other professional model watches, and that's why when people call the oyster line the uh, the starter watch or what it, the entry-level watch, that's the way they put it, it kind of drives me crazy. It's not. It's just as capable as their professional models. It just has less functions. That's it. It's just for uh, for the people that want a cleaner looking watch, maybe something that is not so overt, something that is a little bit more subtle, and people that love three-handers, time-only watches. All right, and uh, he also writes... If I can find, I've got so many pages. Here it is. Uh, again, it doesn't attract unwanted attention. Most people think it is a Seiko. This is not meant as a sneer to Seiko. They are a great brand. Yep, yeah, makes sense. I mean, it doesn't have that uh, Cyclops and, and that sort of Submariner look and, and not that bright shine of a Saracrome bezel insert. So that's one of the best things about these OPs and I guess you could say the date justs as well, but the date just have the Cyclops and on the Oyster bracelets, they have the polished center links. So this is the most subtle Rolex out there pretty much. I take it with me when browsing pre-owned watches. It provides a reference point when looking at polishing camphers, lugs, etc. And yes, it's, it's great because it's humble enough that maybe they think, well, this guy's a... a a price sensitive buyer conscious about price um, and and that can work for you when you're trying to negotiate prices if you roll in with you know a, a meteorite $40,000 quite gold GMT Master 2 uh, they're gonna know you you've got a lot of money and they're probably not gonna budge on price with this one it shows that you're a Rolex guy you know what you're talking about you know what you're doing you've been in Rolex for a while it's a discontinued model but price might be something that uh, needs to be worked with for you. So it's a great watch to to shop in, absolutely. Obviously not if you're buying a low-end watch, right? I guess it's all relative. If you're shopping for Rolex, this is a great watch. If you're shopping for pre-owned Seikos, okay, this is a bad watch, it's a Rolex. So uh, yeah, a little bit um, below what you're trying to get, I think is is good. And so this is perfect for those, you know, pre-ceramic, uh, you know, Rolex dealings. All right, Robin, this is an awesome watch to have in the collection. Oyster Perpetuals have always been cool watches. Maybe not to the people who don't understand them, 
that say these are entry-level watches, entry-level Rolex watches, they don't get it, right? They don't understand, like you point out, that it's every bit the tool watch that a sub or a GMT is, but it just doesn't have the bells and whistles. It's for the purist that understand that. And for that reason, they've always been cool watches. But this is extra cool because it's the 39 millimeter version. They don't make it anymore. We had no idea that they would do away with the 39 millimeter OP and that you would then only have the choice between the 36 and the current 41 millimeter. And uh, it was a short production run. And so that makes it even cooler and even more collectible. Great watch to have. As far as the dial style, it's a personal preference. I've got a friend who loves the purple dial, and like you point out, it's got the, the sunburst aspect to it. Now, as far as the desirability of the different styles, I think we all know that the white is more desirable. The question is, in the future, could you upgrade to white? It might not be something you want to do, but I would at least find out. I'd give RSC a call and find out what it would cost and think about if you would want to do that. Now, if it was the other way around and you had the more desirable white dial, and I, I think that's my favorite because of the symmetry of the indices. Yours, the, the three, six, and nine indices are a little bit different. And again, that gives it a uniqueness. Some people might like that. For me, um, not so much, okay? And of course, the, the red accents uh, are, are something that people might not like. But it might not be something you want to upgrade to. And again, if you had the white dial, I wouldn't be suggesting this because I'd say, well, just keep the more desirable dial in there. But you could always see what it would cost to upgrade to upgrade again. I'm using that term, but just to, to get that desirable dial because in the future, it might not be possible. And it might be kind of cool to be able to get that dial while you can, all right? Even if you like the purple one more. If you lose your purple one to get that white one, I don't think I would do it, all right? I don't think I would do it. But if, if, you, can get, if you can get both, why not? So, great watch to have, and um, thank you for sharing it with us. We're gonna continue on with his other watches. In this video, we looked at his chronograph, his Brigade, and his do-it-all three-hander and so far we're doing good. All right, see you in the next video. Guys, let Robin know what you think about this uh, purple dialed OP. Do you agree that he might wanna get the white dial while he can, while it's still possible? And by the way, we don't even know if it's possible. I think he should, all right? I would want that. I would want that uh, extra dial, whether it's in the watch or, or not. Uh, because uh, the white dial OP is pretty special. But then, of course, so is his uh, purple dial. Let him know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in video two.